Hello, everyone. I want to whisk you away to a beautiful high line. Imagine yourself sitting at the anchor, getting ready to walk. What do you do? You check the anchor, make sure it's bomber. You check your leash, check your tie-in point, everything's good. You give the line a shake to check the tension. Maybe it's perfect tension, maybe it's too tight, maybe it's too loose. But then you notice between each tape, you're not seeing that beautiful backup loop that you've come to love. What do you do? Do you loosen the backup? What if it's too high or not high enough? Do you still loosen it? We all know that a tight backup makes the line quite hard to walk. And so what if loosening the backup changes the safety of the line? What do you do? My name is Jerry Mischewski, and today I'm going to be talking about loose highline backups, concerns that I have, and potential issues that there may be with this style of rigging. And so the current trend with Highline is to rig with a loose backup so that you see loops, as you can see in this picture, between each tape. And those loops should remain even when you're in the middle of the Highline, the point at which the webbing is actually at its longest. And so that often means there's several meters additional length in the backup line compared to the main line. And so it's commonly understood in our community that this style of rigging contributes to an easier to walk high line. And uh, this presents some, some issues that concern me and I'd like to talk about those today. Um, uh, one issue that I have noticed is that this backup line is not being rigged as a backup line. It's being rigged as a walking aid in the fact that as I mentioned before, a loose backup contributes to an easy walking high line. And that's prioritized over the safety of the actual high line rig. We notice that the line's too tight, we loosen it because it's easier to walk. But maybe it's too, too low or too, too abrasion prone. It's, it's a bad priority. So the first, uh, the first concern I have is abrasion. And there's two types of rigs that concern me the most with this, with this first concern. Uh, ones that are running up over an edge or near an edge towards the lip or ones that are ho hovering over a rock, this is actually me, uh, near an anchor that the rock is not initially concerned or an initial concern for abrasion. Maybe it's thought that nothing will happen because it's a few meters away from the line, but um, yeah, that's one of the lines that concerns me. So recently I was at a, con a symposium, the Technical Rescue Symposium, and I attended a talk by J.R. McCuller, where he was comparing a twin-tensioned rope system to a traditional tight mainline loose backup system in a technical rescue situation. And the gist of the test was he had a 250-kilogram mass, or 200-kilogram mass, that he would drop onto one of these two systems, a twin tension rope or tight main line, loose backup, over an edge and observe what happens. And they, they varied the, the size of the ropes and the amount of slack in the backup in the traditional system. And I have a short video of one of these tests. And before you play it, Sonia, uh, the, the one on the left here is the twin tension rope system. And so this mass is connected to two ropes that are exactly the same length. And they're going to drop this load onto those twin tension ropes. And there's a sharp edge there where the white carpet is. And that's four layers of canvas. And then on the right, there's two ropes. One is the main line, which is the same length as the ropes on the left. And then there's a backup line, which is 15 centimeters longer. And the same edge, this is actually the exact same spot. Uh, with the same four layers of canvas. And so go ahead and play, Sonia. And pause it now, please. No worries. There we go. Press play again. Pause. Perfect. OK, so as we can see here, the main line on this one broke immediately. And also, this mass is hanging considerably lower, even though the, the zoom is not quite the same on the two angles. Uh, but it's, it is hanging quite a bit lower there. And then if we continue playing, 
the backup brakes also. Pause it again, please. And then on the left, you can see the twin tension ropes, both are still intact. And uh, continue playing. This is a close up of the twin tension rope. As you can see there, there's four layers of canvas. Boom, mainline brakes. Boom, backup line brakes. And uh, so this, there's many other, there's 26 videos just like this. And uh, there's some other testing done by another fellow named Kirk Mothner that shows similar results. Uh, and this is very concerning. Even with this adequate looking protection, I've seen high lines with much less Edge Pro than this. The tight main loose backup failed in almost every single scenario. And every single one of the twin tension rope systems was intact fully. Now these, these test results are not fully representative of our industry because slacklining is not straight down over a sharp edge like that, but it is a concern. These loose backups can present an abrasion issue if overlooked. I just said that, okay. And then the second concern I have is ground fall. Um, so as the longer hinds, the lines get longer, um, and the, the backups get looser. Uh, the golden standard these days is to use a nylon or, or polyester static rope as your backup. And it's going to have loops between those tapes, even when you're standing in the middle of the line, which, as I mentioned earlier, often corresponds to several additional meters of length in the rope. Um, that can be dangerous for ground fall. And at the same symposium that I saw the previous test, I saw another talk given by Larry Walters, where he was testing the fall distance of two different types of rescue systems, one using an MPD as a belay device and one using tandem Pressix. And the gist of the test was they took a 270 kilogram mass, hung it from 20 me 21 meters of rope going up over a pulley and then down to one of these two types of belay systems. They would cut the, the weight free and shock load the system. And they would vary the slack amount in the system in addition to the 21 meters and measure how, fall, how far the, the mass would fall. And here are some of the results. I don't have a video from this one, sorry. Um, with just over half a meter of slack in the system on top of the 21 meters, which we all have seen high lines that are that short with way more slack in the backup than just half a meter. These, this mass was falling upwards or close to two meters. Then if we just add another additional 0.6 meters to that, it's close to three meters in every case. And then an another 60 centimeters, the mass hits the ground, which is three meters away from where, where they dropped it from. And so it's, it's quite clear that having a lot of slack in the system will result in less than favorable fall distances. And so to, to, leave, to leave you guys with something, backup lines are meant to be backup lines. They are not something that is supposed to make the line easier to walk. The line is there to, to protect us in the, in the event of a mainline failure. It's not meant to make a line easier. And so when you're rigging your high lines, keep that in mind. Keep in, keep in mind that if something goes wrong with your main line, that backup has to save you. Rig it in that way. And keep, keep the abrasion in mind, keep the ground fall in mind. And there are probably other issues that I have overlooked as well that just be mindful of that. And we have an impressively high safety safety record in slacklining, and let's keep it that way. Keep highlining safe and rig your backups like they're backups. Thank you.